Today on Wood Turning, we're going to make an olive wood utensil holder. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. So my story starts here. My wife bought a set of really expensive, really nice olive wood utensils for the kitchen because she got some good cookware finally. She deserved it. She's a great cook. And so she said, can you make me a utensil holder? And I'm like, yeah, I got a ton of black walnut. And she said, no, I want it made of olive wood. And I'm like, you can't find olive wood that big. Well, lo and behold, the next week I go to SWAT in Texas at that show and there is a group selling large pieces of olive wood. It's really great. And these are from Gerard. Our group imports. I'll put the information down in the uh, comments section down there so you can get to their website. But they sell olive wood that comes from Jordan. So it's really cool, really large stuff, and it is gorgeous. I mean, look at this piece here. You can see all the figure in it and everything. I just love it. So my wife wanted a tall utensil holder which I made this one, but I had to modify it because the spoons went too deep. So I put a plug inside that nobody will ever see. And <laughs> so it drops like that. What I would want to do is make a shorter sister of this one. And we're gonna make this one about this tall since it's a little bit wider. So it'll be a set, but they'll be a little bit different. It'll look really cool. So I just need to trim some of this off before we get turning. So to add to my further list of stupid things I've done in my life, this has always been up. And I always complained because I had to raise this up when I cut narrow stuff. And I was doing some one inch stuff the other day and I went, what's that? Found out I could lay my bandsaw blade guide on its side. <laughs> Silly me. Hey, if any of you have been doing that, let me know. So anyway, I'm just gonna take a piece of this off and just run it through the blade really nice and slow. Oh, this cuts like butter. I love olive wood. Hey, I want to take this moment to thank our sponsors, American Beauty, Lays are awesome that Robust makes, and Easy With Tools who makes e these great cutters and such, they're awesome too. If it wasn't for both of them, we wouldn't have this show and be able to do it. And it's also really cool to work with all this neat equipment. Now I've mounted the blank on the lathe, and one thing I did that was special is I drilled a hole in here so my live center can go inside a little bit. When you're turning something big and heavy and out around, you want to have that little bit of extra protection so that point won't pull out if you get a catch. So this piece might not look heavy, but olive wood is really heavy. So we're going to start it up slow. I've spun it a couple times, it's not hitting, and it's also going to be a little bit out of balance. We'll get it going. And I'm going to take my easy wood cutter here and we're going to just slowly round this out and make a cylinder. That's our first order of business. So we got our cylinder kind of roughly shaped out, but I want to talk about something here. Making a curved surface is easy. Making a perfectly flat surface is a real pain in the, you know what. <laughs> so I was actually using a roughing gouge on this one and it took me forever to get this perfectly flat. Even using my tool rest technique where I have it perfectly parallel and use my hands and the grip right and everything, didn't happen. Then went, duh, okay. So I roughed this whole thing out using my large Easywood uh, straight cutter gouge, right? You can barely see it because of all the, the olive wood has a lot of oil in it because olive oil. Yeah. So it also coats everything you use. So that's why this shop is so dirty right now. But anyway, that's perfectly flat, right? So just watch this. I, I'm going to leave my mask up because we're done with the hard part. I'm going to take this in here. My tool rest is perfectly parallel with the wood. I'm going to just gently kiss the edge there. And now I'm just going to slide across and keep the tool straight. And you can see it's taking out any bumps and it's coming, becoming perfectly flat. So, <laughs> bada bing, I've got a perfectly flat cylinder. So I took the blank and I put a tenon on the end of it and now we are mounted and I'm starting to hollow. Getting a little bit of vibration because this thing is so long, there's a frequency that runs through the wood. I basically made a speaker with that hole in there. 
And that hole is very important because I drill the hole all the way to the bottom because anytime you're doing hollowing, having a hole here gives you a great place to start your hollowing. Now I'm using my new elbow two hollowing system, which I love a lot to do the hollowing, but let's just talk a little bit of standard hollowing technique. I'm using a handle back here, and this is really cool because this is kind of a fulcrum, and so this is doing all the work right here. Then down by my fingertips, I simply have my hand locked in right here, and I'm pivoting through it. So I'm taking short little strokes, like so, come back, take another stroke, just advance the tool a little bit at a time, and nibble. Hollowing is not a race. You do not want to be the first one to finish because you're probably going to blow up your vessel. <laughs> so I'm just taking little bits at a time. I'm probably going maybe a half, quarter of an inch uh, on each series of passes. Now I'm giving Brian a heck of a shower with the shavings. <laughs> the olive wood is really cool. Smells beautiful while you're turning it, but it can be messy. And the other thing I have going right now is that I have a laser hooked up here and it'd be easier to show here. Brian can see. I want to have the distance between the laser and the tip of my tool. That's how wide I want the wall to be. So when that laser drops off the wood over here, I know I've reached my thickness. Right now I'm working on the rim, which is thicker, and I'm not worried about the laser dropping off of that yet because it's going to be thicker. But once I get down to the sides, that's where it's going to make a difference and it's going to show me how thick or thin I have the walls. So I'm going to worry away at this for a little bit until we get a little bit deeper. There, that's better. <laughs> I mentioned olive wood is kind of gunky, <laughs> so our GoPro kind of took a hit on that. So I stopped the lathe. We're going to talk about a couple things. Brian can show you a lot better. But when you're getting deeper, as the tool is hanging out further and further over the uh, tool rest, you want to put just a slight bit of pressure back on the handle. Because that three-quarter inch bar, any bar, is going to want to bend and flex. And if at some point you're deeper and you think you're not getting a good cut, raise the tool rest up just a little bit because the flexing is pulling it down below the curve. So if the tool gets below the curve, it doesn't cut because the bottom's hitting. You bring it up above the curve on the hollow piece, it catches that edge and it cuts. The other thing, in here I'll show you, this side is perfectly smooth. Well, how did I do that with that little tip? As I go in about an inch, the last thing I do is I come back here and I take the tool and I run it straight, just like that, and I watch my laser, which is up here on top, I watch it dropping off the edge of the, the side of the vessel. So as I push in here, I know I'm going perfectly straight, and I do that every inch, and I just clean it up so it's straight all the way through. So it looks like we have a few more inches to go. <laughs> We're getting close. Hope the wife likes this. Now we have the utensil holder hollowed out, we need to take the tenon off the bottom. So I've reverse mounted this. I've expanded the jaws into here to hold this on. And I took it over to the bandsaw and just took off the majority of the tenon. Now I'm just going to take my proxen and grind this down. I kind of want this to look rustic on the bottom. I think that'll go with the way the wood looks. You have to admit this olive wood is just gorgeous stuff. It's incredible to work with and I love it. I'm using mineral oil here, and we're going to put on a very liberal coat. Oh my gosh, look at how that olive wood pops out. Isn't that incredible stuff? I mean, Gerard Imports brings this in from Jordan, and their pricing is really reasonable, i got to tell you this. I bought this piece because I saw that, but man, my wife will love this. Made me a liar saying you couldn't find olive wood this big. But I did not sand the inside because you can put your hand in there and sand that, but while that's turning, you could break your hand. So I don't have that much pride. I just made a nice smooth surface and went with the tool finish on there. But anyway, that is how you make an olive wood utensil holder. So until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. 
Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools.